Hey guys, welcome to the finale of Mission Impossible on the N64. We are in the final set of missions, Ice Storm, not Ice Hit. This one's got four stages in it. And, uh, it's basically revisiting the first area of the game, but it's a little bit expanded, and there's a lot of beefy objectives. It's very hard on Impossible, but we're not playing that. So now, Phelps is out of the picture. It's time for Ethan, and we get... Hey, it's Robert Barnes! What's he doing walking around? I thought he died. <laughs> yeah, this game makes no sense sometimes. That's alright, though. Kicking in the mission track. All too familiar. There's no more new songs, but we do get to hear the Mission Impossible theme again. Like twice. And then it all ends off with that Good beautiful morning, embassy Hunt. piano. It seems that your old friend Basil Prokosh has gone active again. We have information that he is in possession of five nuclear detonators and that he's found a buyer in a country ripe with terrorist activity. This deal will go down at the subbase of Lundquist apparently upgraded security following your last visit. Your mission, Ethan, should you decide to accept it, is to undermine the deal and render all installations on the base useless. As always, should you or any of your IM force be caught or killed, the Secretary will disavow any knowledge of your actions. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Good luck, Ethan. How does nobody see that on the park bench? There's a random box explode. That's strange. I don't understand. Is that what it does in the movies? I don't even remember. It's such a widely said thing, like, this message will self-destruct, but I don't even remember how it plays out in the movies. Alright, Candace, what do we got? We got the old team back, right? Yeah, John Clutter and Andrew Dowie, let's do it. And, like, every little gadget in the book. Yeah, look at all those objectives. You've never seen that many before. Coming on our old trusty boat once again. Gotta love a good spy soundtrack. I believe you do unlock a cheat code for beating this without dying or failing. But at the same time, I don't know, because there's a bonus scene at the credits. That kind of interrupts the cheat that you may unlock. Alright, we gotta get the AFS scrambler and a mine for, uh, what's-his-face here. Let's go. That L button is gonna be your friend, because you can adjust the camera. And this clown. Delayed backflip. Gotta love it. He drops a gun. Yes, he does. It's a high-powered pistol, and that's gonna come in handy because we want to conserve ammo for the silenced gun. But over here is the scrambler on possible. It might still be there on Impossible, I can't remember. You know what would be fun to do, maybe, but I'm... What? Why didn't he pick it up? Uh, I was gonna say, play it on Impossible, but use cheats. So that I have all kinds of weapons and stuff. I don't know, it could be fun, but at the same time, it's not necessary. Then again, this wasn't necessary either. Look at this clown, he wants some. Get over here, buddy. I know you see me. Uh, Alright, here's the last thing for, uh, Clutter. Or is it Dowie? No, this one's for Clutter later. It's something for Dowie. But I'm gonna continue this way, because there's explosives that we need. And oh, we're this close anyway. Might as well grab it now. There we go. Now, there is a guard. Yeah, that red blip on the radar just turned green. Now he's making a beeline for a guard shack. And you can intercept him in the process and get the detonator for the explosives. But, there's something you can do later on. And that kind of takes you out of the way. And we gotta go rendezvous with the, our teammates here. You can kind of hear that little bit of the music on the N64. It's just not as pronounced as it is on the PS1. Which makes sense. I guess, because, uh... CD qu audio quality is better than whatever the N64's MIDI-based stuff was. Do I even know what I'm talking about? Probably not. Ah, uh, we delivered the stuff. Clutter. What a name. I wonder if his house is a mess. Haha. <laughs> so stupid. I should jump in the water for that one. Anyway, now we're gonna hang a left. Communications are back up. Roger. Affirmative. Oh wait, no, that's not affirmative. That's perfect dark. She says affirmative. Affirmative and uh, other stuff. Look at this guy. Dowie's lost his wire cutters. 
just so happens there's some in here, but we've got the gas injector. That's important for getting that detonator pack, since that guard took it. Now I'm switching weapons to conserve ammo. Anybody over here? Yes, there is, but they didn't spot me yet. Let's go in the pump house and sabotage it. It's one of our objectives. There's also a guy with an Uzi in here, I believe. Yep. I don't think he drops it, though. But there's a lot of these guys. It's our, a new weapon. We haven't seen it yet. Got the wire cutters, plant the bombs. Let's get out of here. We don't have the detonator for them yet, though. Yeah, we should be right outside this thing. Deliver the wire cutters. And there's usually a guard. Yep. Delayed backflip every time. I love it. There you go, dude. I always wanted to play as one of those guys, either him or uh, the clutter guy. It's fun either way, though, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know, I guess if the gun was powerful enough, you would do a backflip, whether or not you intended to. But more than likely, it would just decapitate you. There we go. He dropped the gun, that's our first Uzi. Make sure no trucks are coming, because that's instant death. Now, the gas injector, pump it through the door. I don't remember if opening the door without doing that is instant kill, but you definitely would take a lot of damage if it's not. Get the night vision goggles and the detonator. The night vision goggles are only an objective on impossible, but you need them anyway. Whoa, don't run into that truck. It's alright if I waste all the ammo in this thing. It's not really a needed gun for the rest of the missions. The silenced one is way more important. Sabotage the pump house using the detonator, and let's go rendezvous. Roger. Atop the communications building over here. And select our new weapon. It goes fast, though. The guns in this game are not really anything special. It's <laughs> one down. Gosh, it. There, that's better. Move it, guys! Jump on the next truck! There they go. They're like twins. I like it, though. This whole set of missions is kind of... It feels like something out of a movie. And I know that's the dumbest sentence ever. The game is based off of a movie. But the action is fitting. This can be a pain in the neck. You gotta wait for a truck and then jump on it. And sometimes you miss the jump. Or sometimes the jump will instantly kill you. I see the headlights. This brings back memories of Pokemon, how Mew was under one of these kinds of trucks. Or this is how I always pictured it in my head, I don't know. Ah, see what I mean? How did I not jump on that? There it is, finally. That took like three attempts. I just always crouch on top of the truck, just in case. These guards can shoot you still. I'm surprised it's not happening. I've seen so many, like I said a million times, so many weird things that happen in this game that result in either mission failure or instant death or something. Alright, the tunnel. I love this mission. I remember as a kid it was just one of my favorites just because it plays the, the fire alarm theme, which is just a remix of Mission Impossible theme. So this is just kind of a mix of platforming and the same gameplay we've already seen. Ducking and jumping while on trucks, and then get these explosives and plant them. But what's cool is taking out these guards. You got eight explosives, and each of these segments of the tunnel are, are symmetrical, they're identical, whatever the word is. Just hop on the next truck and keep on doing the same exact thing. And it's just the deeper you go, there's more guards. But, uh, it's fun, though. It's one of those things where even though it's the same thing over and over again, and it's not really anything special, it's fun to play. Once again, just go back to the same thing that GoldenEye 007 has, or Perfect Dark. You can play the same four-minute-long mission over and over again, but it's still fun every time. 
because you could do just things a little bit different or it just feels good like this strafing opening the door and hitting them in the head instantly for some reason it's just fun say what you want about the clunkiness of the game but if they manage to make this fun there's something here I don't know I do think that the universal opinion of this game is that it's pretty bad But I guess the whole reason I'm doing this at all is to show that there is some hidden goodness here. But maybe I only see it. Whoops, that was a terribly timed jump. This looks unusually crisp and clear. Yeah, here's a new guard. Yeah, way to go! Got the little echo to the voice too. Why, right, where are you, chum? Love it. It's just fun. I always liked uh, this outfit too. Just a little beanie. I don't know. Am I the only one who ever had that effect playing a video game and thinking an outfit is really cool? Well, no, because that's what cosplaying is. But probably nobody cosplays as Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible on the N64 slash PlayStation. That would be. Nobody would know what the heck you were wearing. Then again, there might be some Mission Impossible fans that dress up like whatever he wears in the various movies. I remember going to a very small theater for, I think it was Mission Impossible 2? Whatever the one, the Limp Biscuit song, Take a Look Around, was like the, uh, the marketing for it. That's still a pretty cool song. Limp Biscuit's a little weird, but I still like every now and then hearing some of them. Like, Rearranged is an okay song. There you go! Crazy. But see, the combination of those two- Whoa, I've got to slow down. That's crazy. It's not supposed to do that, but it did it. So we live with it and we move on. Alright, we got a face maker, and then we gotta go get rendezvous later on in the next mission for explosives. This is like the most complex mission. Look at all these objectives. And on Impossible, you gotta be super careful how you do it. Especially that cut off the camera power one. Alright, let's do it right back to the very first mission. Except this place is way bigger now. In a way, once again, going back to Goldeneye, it reminds me of the surface level, how you visit that place twice. Understood. Understood. Roger. You're done. And he dropped an Uzi. You gotta come here on Impossible, because one of these guys has a piece of paper that tells you the specific panel that you need to destroy to cut off the camera power. It doesn't exist on possible difficulty, because it doesn't matter what panel you destroy, it just completes the objective appropriately, but on impossible you run the risk of destroying the power to the bridge that's your escape. So it's just once again one of those extra objective things. <laughs> Every time dude. Uh, Come over here and hopefully nothing weird happens. I think once I did glitch through that thing and just fell right in the water and died. It happens. Rarely, I would say, but... Definitely want to take out these guys because if you jump down there without killing these guys, they instantly kill you. Even though they don't have sniper rifles, the game acts like they do once you jump down. Like, I remember walking right under this thing, and it was instant kill. Like, my health just instantly dropped to zero. But here's Clutter, and we got our explosives from him. And a piece of plastic, that's for cutting off the camera power. Now we gotta go back, but we gotta avoid the searchlights. Let's take them all out, as Falco would say. That's my favorite Star Fox 64 mission, Zonus. 
Or I, no, I ranked it number two in that really old video I did. Area six is still number one just because of how frantic it, it is. But I don't know what I'm doing after this game. I got a speaking of Star Fox, I could do more wingless challenges of Star Fox 64, but there's also adventures, assault, and I was even thinking of trying to figure out how to record command. Because I remember enjoying that game despite also being disappointed in it. The best thing that it does is it lets you play as every single Star Fox character. Except for, I guess, the guys from Star Fox 2 that were just taken away from the franchise. Uh, you can select the sniper rifle and be Andrew Dowie. I'm gonna do it because these guys are crazy. I think there's a third one, unless that's only on Impossible. He might be wandering around somewhere. Just be careful you don't get spotted by anything. And this is where you plant the explosives for your escape. And now the camera control panel is over this way. And you're supposed to plant the plastic on it. Plastique. <laughs> it's so stupid. Now see it's red and green. On possible it doesn't matter where you put it. But it's random every time you play this mission on impossible, which one is the one that cuts the power to the bridge and which one cuts the power to the camera. Let's see, it destroys both panels anyway on possible. And it has no effect on the bridge whatsoever. That's what you want to happen. Now let's just go. Find the accountant. Got it. He's right where we got our first face make. Uh. Yeah, face mask, face maker thing. And now you have 20 minutes to beat the mission. Sorry, buddy. Luckily, that's not mission failure. I don't know if the accountant's really that bad. But put your gun away, as always, and take his face. I still... You have to appreciate this game for the face maker. There's not too many other games have something like that. Sometimes it is just the simple things. Like an animation, or a sound effect, or a song. Or just like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain what I'm thinking right now. But I just remember as a kid, changing my face into and playing as these other characters was so cool to me. And maybe that's why I'm still playing this game and didn't just completely forget about it. This also has a secondary objective on Impossible. It takes a lot more work to get in here and not run into a failure. But you swipe the card that we stole from him to get the briefcase, and now we gotta give it to Clutter so he can plant a bomb on it. And I seem to remember there being something very dangerous here. Like maybe right here is where you could instantly die. That might be on Impossible, or just a game glitch that happens sometimes. Alright, that's done. And now, speaking of secondary objectives... On Impossible... Here, here they come, there's the buyer, who we gotta give this suitcase to. And on Impossible, there's an extra objective to kill the buyer before he escapes. In addition to the guy who just blows up in the helicopter. And that's pretty tricky. But luckily we don't have to do that here, because if I did, I would probably end up failing the mission, because I don't remember... ...how to go about doing that without getting caught and failing the mission, or alerting everybody and dying. But yeah, the remainder of this particular stage... It's just kind of a lot of waiting around for this guy, and then Clutter himself. Kind of a very clunky game, but it's still enjoyable. <laughs> that animation. It just magically teleports into his hand. Yeah, I think it was the guy in the brown jacket that you're supposed to eliminate. Not that guy right there, but the one who just left. Alright, now switch to Dowie again, because there's all kinds of guards. 
stepping out onto this platform without doing this, I think that's an instant game over too. But we don't have to worry about killing the buyer in the truck, so we'll just let him go and wait here. This is the gunboat, this is the end of the stage, but you cannot go on it first. You have to wait for Clutter to get on it. Yeah, that guy in the brown jacket right there, you're supposed to eliminate him on impossible difficulty. Because if it gets this far and plays the cutscene, he drives away in the truck, as we're about to see. Or, I thought there was more to it. And that would be mission failure, because he's still alive. But even though we're right here at the end, we gotta wait for Clutter. Because if you step on there first, you man the, uh... Not the turret, but what actually drives the boat. And that's a mission failure. <laughs> so stupid. So, yeah, really, just the summary of this game is just that it's very clunky and rough around the edges, but there's some fun to be had and some musical gems hidden with it. But once he's on the boat, we're good to step on. And now, let's pray to the gods that the game doesn't freeze, because that happens to me a lot. Hopefully because this is a new plug-in and I don't know. But even on the regular cartridge. See, that's the bridge. If you had cut the power to that, you wouldn't be able to come through here. And it's mission failure instantly. I don't even think it plays this gunboat driving away if you do that. But this is it, the final stage. It's just another one that plays the Mission Impossible song and you just shoot a whole bunch of crap. It's like a final hurrah. Let's go! This can be dangerous though because I'm already damaged a little bit. You gotta watch out for the mines in the water and definitely these turrets on the coast. But this stage loves to soft lock on me for some reason. So I'm really hoping that doesn't happen here. Yeah, these turrets right here. Oh, wait, there's one closer to me. I don't know if I can spin that way. No, I can't go left anymore. What the heck? That's another thing. I hope I don't die. Because I really do want to unlock whatever cheat is involved in this mission, but I'm also not sure if the bonus scene after the credits interrupts that. It's too bad I didn't get the cheat for the, the mole hunt mission, though. Alright. Look out for the mines in the water, you know they're gonna be here. So far, so good. But there's one specific instance that, even on this emulator, uh, when I recorded the long play and all the other videos I did with this game, I think it's this right here. It's a very specific spot of this stage where it soft locks. The music still keeps playing, and the sound effects are there, but everything just freezes. Yeah, this this is it right here. It seems to be all right so far. Just make sure. Take out the enemy gunboats too. But yeah, literally every building and thing can shoot you, so you want to destroy it, obviously, before you get too close. <laughs> this is weird with a game for controller, that's my plan. I'm pressing L instead of Z. That's a lot harder to press rapidly than the Z trigger of the N64. There we go, is that it? I think we're approaching the, uh, the gas factory. Oh no, there's more. Okay. This might be where it usually soft locks. I know it's as you approach one of these gunboats that's just chilling here. Every time you hear that clacking noise and the screen shaking, obviously you're taking damage. But I think I'm alright. We're very close to the end. I think this is the last property. Yeah, the gas factory has to be next. So, uh, that's the only objective besides escape in the gunboat. It's two symmetrical sides to it, with loaded with turrets. If that's what you want to call them. Enemy towers. Uh, I 
really should just stick to one side first. It really doesn't matter. Take down the smokestacks. There you go. I think we're good as long as it doesn't do something stupid right here. That's crazy first time and it didn't soft lock. There you go, the game is beaten on possible, so eh. It's definitely a lot more of a challenge on impossible. But not, not necessarily because it's more difficult and there's more objectives. Kind of, yeah, that's the intent. But it's more so just how the game does so many weird things. Causing you to abort the mission and try again just to bypass a programming error. We've done it, yeah. Hero gets the girl. Same old story. The world will be a safer place with these guys out of business. My hero. Yay. Pretty cool game though, all things considered. I'd take it over Superman 64 or Glover. There's some people that have asked me to do Glover, but I played that game for a little bit and I understood nothing of what was going on and found it to be really irritating and boring. So that's up there as like one of the bad Super N or N64 games for me. Where is he? Look for the music guy. I should say Michael Pummel. I mean, props to all these other people too. It's just, I think the music stands out a lot. But we get to hear the Embassy Piano song again. It's good stuff. So what's next from me? Probably a Star Fox game. And I am still working on Fire Emblem 7. I've got a little bit done. But, um... I still got a lot more to record and edit and produce and then upload. And I want to get a little bit ahead before I start releasing it. So that way if something comes up and I'm not able to keep on uploading more and more, uh, at least I have a lot in the backlog, you know? But that'll be it for me. I'm gonna just sit back and let you enjoy this piano song. So thanks a lot for watching, you guys. And I will see you in the future, whatever it is I do. Take care. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.